Rivers are natural waterways and the larger ones are used by men for transport. They start as small streams in the hills and flow down to the sea. Canals are man-made waterways. They are dug from one town to another and filled with water. Coal and other heavy goods can then be carried by boat from the town where it is produced to other towns where it is unloaded and used. Carrying goods by canal is cheaper than carrying them by road or rail. Rivers always run downhill. Canals, on the other hand, to get from one town to another, often have to go uphill as well as down. Let us pretend that this black mass is a hill and that we have dug our canal as far as the bottom. We could dig a tunnel under the hill but this is very expensive. Somehow, we must find a way to keep the water on the hill. This can be done by erecting barriers. A series of canal steps have now been made right over the hill. Our second problem is how to get the boat up and down the steps. This is where we use a lock. Here is a diagram of a lock, and we can see that a piece of canal has been enclosed by two barriers or gates. This is how it works. Water from the top step of the canal has filled the lock and lifted the boat up one of the canal steps. When the boat goes downhill, the lock can be emptied. This is a lock on the Grand Union Canal in Hertfordshire. Two gates at each end hold back the water. Let us now see a boat pass through. Here come two boats which are about to go up a canal step. To save time, a member of the crew goes on ahead to get the lock ready for the approaching boat. Sometimes the lock is full of water, in which case it must be emptied before the boats can enter. With the help of a handle, the man opens the small doors called sluices, out of which the water inside the lock can escape. The sluices in the bottom lock gates are under the surface of the water. The boats have by now nearly reached the lock, and as soon as the water level on each side of the gates is the same, they can be opened. Steering a boat is by no means easy because of the narrowness of these locks. There is just room for two boats side by side. No sooner is the first boat in, than the gate is closed behind it. As the rear boat moves alongside, the second gate is closed. With the bottom gate firmly closed, the sluices in the top gate can be opened and the water lift has started. The lock takes about two minutes to fill. During this time, some members of the crew do a little work while others just look on.
by now the lock is full. The water level on each side of the top gates is the same and they can therefore be opened. The boat has been lifted about seven feet and can proceed along the next step of the canal. Every time this lock is emptied, 56,000 gallons of water are used. If this water were not replaced, the top step of the canal would soon become empty. Water is therefore collected in reservoirs. By opening a sluice, the water can be let into the canal as required. Another method of keeping the canal full is by pumping water out of wells. To assist in saving water, some locks have by their side small ponds called side ponds. When the lock is emptied, part of the water flows into these side ponds and can be used again. These boats are approaching a lock on the way down the canal steps. Work it out yourself. There are locks on rivers too. These are usually much bigger than the ones we have just seen, but they work in exactly the same way. Locks on rivers are necessary because where a part of the river is too shallow for boats to sail on it, a wall can be built at the end of the shallow part which holds back some of the water and makes the river deeper. This type of wall is called a weir and of course the boat cannot sail over it. It is therefore necessary to build a lock to lift the boats up and down. <laughs> 